Today I want to share with you a master recipe for making a medicinal herbal poultice using either fresh herbs or dry herbs. Hi sweet friends, I'm Mary and welcome to Mary's Nest where I teach traditional cooking skills for making nutrient-dense foods like bone broth, ferment, sourdough, and more. So if you enjoy learning how to be a modern pioneer in the kitchen, consider subscribing to my channel. And don't forget to click on the little notification bell below that'll let you know every time I upload a new video. Well, today I'm continuing my series where I'm sharing with you master recipes for how to make medicinal herbal remedies. And if you want to catch up with any of my previous videos, I've put together a playlist and I'll link to it in the description underneath this video. I show you how to make tonics and salves and oils and teas and a whole host of herbal remedies. So if that's something that's interesting to you, I think you'll enjoy that playlist. Now I just want to take a minute to speak to the beginner who may be new at making medicinal herbal remedies. If you're very experienced, feel free to check the timestamps in the description underneath this video so you can jump ahead. And also in the description, I'll have a link to my website, Mary's Nest, same name as my YouTube channel, where you can read the instructions or print them out for how to make this master recipe for making a medicinal herbal poultice. Now, whenever you're making medicinal herbal remedies, it's very important to keep in mind that these do have medicinal properties. So if you're pregnant or nursing or thinking of using herbal medicinal remedies with children, or you may be taking medication, whether over the counter or prescription, or maybe you even have allergies, then you really want to check with your medical professional to see if an herbal remedy is appropriate for you. Now, I know I've heard from many of you that you can get disappointed with your various medical professionals, whether it's a doctor for yourself or a pediatrician for your child or some sort of other medical practitioner who may not be knowledgeable about herbs. And I understand that completely, but the good news is that more and more doctors are becoming knowledgeable about what I like to call integrative medicine, some of which includes herbal medicine. And we have Dr. Andrew Weil to thank for that, the Harvard-educated medical doctor who formed the Integrative School of Medicine as part of the University of Arizona Medical School. And the good news is integrative programs have really spread throughout the United States and I'm sure in other parts of the world as well, so that more and more medical students are learning about integrative medicine. And specifically, if the term integrative medicine is new to you, what it means is that doctors will take the best from modern medicine, but they'll also incorporate traditional healing methods from various traditional cultures. And that really works hand in hand for those of us who like creating a traditional foods kitchen because traditional healing methods, especially those that are homemade, fit beautifully into the lifestyle that we have. But I will share with you that I live in a small town, but we have a medical doctor here who has been trained under Dr. Andrew Weil's integrative medicine program. And so she's very knowledgeable about a whole host of traditional healing methods that can be used in combination with modern healing methods. Alrighty, well now that we have that out of the way, the next thing I want to explain to you is what do I mean by the term master recipe? A master recipe is basically a template it's something that you can follow that has general steps to help you make something. And in the case of making a master recipe for a medicinal herbal remedy, what I do is walk you through the basic steps of whether it's creating a poultice or a tincture or an oil or a salve or a tea, whatever the case may be, I give you all the basic steps but then you can customize that template to meet your needs with the herbs that meet your needs. 
So for example, when you're making a medicinal herbal tea, if you want to make one that will help you for a good night's sleep, which I have a recipe for that, and I'll be sure to link to that in the description below. That's a very popular video and recipe. I show you the main master recipe, and then in the next video, I show you how to make a medicinal herbal tea for a good night's sleep what herbs will work best to help you relax and drift off. So think of this video and this recipe as your template for making a poultice. And that leads us to the next question you might have. What is a poultice? A poultice is basically a very easy way to apply herbs directly to your skin to help with a particular condition that may benefit from the application or the direct application of herbs to your skin. A poultice can come in very handy, specifically what we're making today, an herbal poultice can come in very handy if you've not made your herbal oils or your herbal salves. Now the term poultice is somewhat of an old fashioned term and it actually has a very large umbrella. A poultice can be made from a lot of things, not just herbs. We're focusing on herbs, but you may have heard remedies made with onions or cabbage or garlic and so on and so forth. A whole host of things that maybe your grandmother or depending on how old you are, your great grandmother made and used when her children, maybe your parents or grandparents, were under the weather. Poultices were often made from a variety of things and maybe placed on the chest to help with a cough, placed on the throat to help with a sore throat, and so on and so forth. But today what we're gonna do is focus on making a poultice from fresh herbs, and we're also going to make one from dry herbs, and we're going to use this for various skin issues. Now you can make a medicinal herbal poultice with fresh herbs, as I mentioned earlier, or dry herbs and some liquid. And you can make them with a single herb or you can make them with a mixture of herbs. And the herbs that you'll decide to use to make your poultice will be based on what particular condition you're trying to resolve by using a poultice. Now, if you want to learn more about herbs, I have a couple of recommendations. If you've been with me a while, you know that I have shared various books with you that are written by a woman named Rosemary Gladstar. She's really an herbal expert. And I believe she's been writing about herbs since going back to the 1970s. Some of her books that I often recommend are her Medicinal Herbs, A Beginner's Guide. This is a terrific book because it tells you how to recognize herbs, how to grow them, and how to use them. And in this book, she goes over the various medicinal properties associated, I think, with about 20 or so uh, herbs. And most of them are very common, 24. Uh, 24 herbs and most of them are common and relatively easy uh, for you to grow in your garden if you have an herb garden or grow in pots like this on a sunny windowsill in your kitchen so she makes everything very accessible another book she has as you get a little farther down on your herbal journey is her book called herbal recipes for vibrant health both of these books are excellent uh, they go through a lot of herbs and, as I said, what their medicinal properties are and how you can use them to help yourself. Now, my friend Heidi, and this is a different Heidi than my other friend Heidi over at Rain Country Homestead, but this Heidi also has a YouTube channel and it's basically her name, Heidi Villegas, and I'll be sure to link to it below. And she has a website where she teaches all about herbs. Plus, she also offers online courses if you like to learn in that way. And she's been very kind to offer my viewers a 10% discount. Uh, so I'll be sure to put all the information underneath this video. Now today I'm going to make our medicinal herbal poultice using the herb thyme. And the reason why I'm making this medicinal herbal poultice with thyme is because thyme is very accessible. It's a very common herb. 
It's easy to grow either indoors or outdoors. It's easy to find in a dry form. You have a lot of options when it comes to thyme. Plus, thyme is just a wonderful healing herb. And I'll have a lot more information about the medicinal herbal properties of thyme in the blog post that corresponds with this video. But what I will share here is the reason why I'm picking thyme to make our medicinal herbal poultice today is because thyme is a wonderful disinfectant. Thyme also helps with increasing circulation. And since thyme has those properties, it can make a wonderful poultice for if you have a little scratch or a bug bite or a minor cut, something like that. Because you want something that'll disinfect the minor wound and then also increase circulation because circulation will lead to healing. And you may have just heard me use the term minor. And that's something that I want to stress when it comes to using a medicinal herbal poultice on your skin. You're talking about using it on a minor scratch, a minor cut, a minor wound, something like that. A major wound or one that looks infected should receive proper medical treatment. So I have a little, my very minor little puncture here that I got working outside in my garden somewhere. I'm always working very fast and I'll often notice a little something and I don't even remember how I got it. But this is the perfect type of thing for a poultice. And the nice thing about using a poultice is number one, it can be prepared very quickly. And number two, because of its damp property, it can kind of help flush out a few of the impurities that you may have developed in getting a little puncture or a scratch or a scrape, whatever the case may be, as opposed to a salve, which is better put on later because this way you've flushed out a lot of the impurities using your poultice. Well, first let's start with making our medicinal herbal poultice using fresh herbs. And as I mentioned, we're gonna use thyme. Now there are many ways to make an herbal medicinal poultice. You can do this the old fashioned way if you have a mortar and pestle, or you can do this the modern way using a little mini chop or a little spice grinder. Or if you wanna just keep things super simple, you can just get out your knife and a cutting board and you can just chop everything up, which is what I'm gonna show you how to do. The bottom line is you're just working toward trying to create your herbs into a paste. And then you're going to take that paste and apply it to your skin. Now what I've got here on my arm is a relatively small area. So I don't need a lot of herbs, but just kind of like a nice handful. Now, when some people make a poultice, they may just use the leaves. And that works very well if you have a, a plant that has large leaves, like maybe basil. And in those cases, you can often just take the leaf and put that right, you know, work it on your hand a little to help release some of the essential oils and put that directly on whatever little cut or scrape you have. Using that system is often referred to as a quick poultice. You're just grabbing a leaf, crunching it a little in your hand, and putting it right onto your minor wound. That works very well if you're out in the garden and you have a bit of an herb garden that uh, is growing something that is appropriate to use on your skin. And speaking of using various herbs on your skin, you wanna keep in mind that if you have never used a particular herb on your skin, this may be a good time to do a little skin test. And you just wanna put a little bit of whatever poultice you're making on the inner arm and make sure that you don't have any sort of allergic reaction to it. Assuming your skin looks fine, you're all set and then can go use it uh, anywhere else where you may need your poultice. Now, in the case of thyme, I am gonna go ahead and use the stems and the leaves. Now, all we're gonna do is just take our knife and start chopping this up. And we're gonna keep chopping it. Now, I wanna mention the cutting board that I'm using, I'm actually putting it on top of my good cutting board. 
is because sometimes when you work with herbs, depending on how much essential oils they release and, and liquid, it can stain your cutting board. Now, can, does it eventually fade and can you clean it? Yes, but I definitely just like to use a little more inexpensive one uh, for this process. And then once I get it all chopped up like this, I'm gonna start going over it many times with my knife until it forms a nice paste. Then all you wanna do from here on in is just take your knife and rock it back and forth over the herbs until you begin to get them finely chopped into what resembles somewhat of an herbal paste. So just keep chopping up your herb until it's very fine and looking somewhat like a paste. This is perfect and you can now move on to the next step. Now what you need to apply your poultice and keep it in place is some type of bandage. For something very small like this, some folks will just put a tiny little bit of the herb and then put a band-aid over it. But I wanted to show you what I like to keep on hand. And that brings us to the subject of keeping things on hand in what I call the healing pantry. I have another video, which I'll definitely link in the description below, uh, that I share with you how to create a healing pantry and what I refer to as a medicinal herbal cabinet. And basically it's just keeping all of the various home remedies that you make using herbs and all of the supplies you need uh, in order to use those healing remedies and keeping them all in one place. And I think you'll enjoy that video. Now you can definitely use something like this. This is just a store-bought bandage, but you can also just make your own bandages. And things like this always give me a little bit of a chuckle. I think of women, you know, back in pioneer days and colonial days and whatnot, where they would just pull up their dress and rip their petticoat and make bandages for people who were injured. But what I do is these are just some of my older flour sack towels. If you've seen all my bone broth videos, uh, you've seen me use the flour sack towels uh, to strain different bone broths, as well as strain other things. I really like them because uh, they're very versatile and, ver and reusable. And what I'll do is just take them and cut them up. You know, when it, maybe sometimes they have a little hole in it or something and they're just, or they've gotten very thin. Some of the ones I have are like 25 years old and they're just getting a little worn. And so I'll make sure they're very clean and then I'll cut them into various bandage sizes and I'll just keep them in a glass container like this with a nice snap-on lid. And then I've got these handy whenever I need a bandage. And so these are the type of things that are part of my healing pantry. So the way that you would do this, obviously using clean hands and after giving your cut or scrape, whatever the case is, a good wash with just warm soap and water and letting it air dry and then applying your herbal poultice. Now, all you're gonna do is take some of your chopped herbs and you're gonna squeeze them together and basically they're gonna form a paste and you're going to see there's quite a bit of liquid uh, coming out of it and holding them together. Then, this is definitely easier to do if you have a helper, but if not, you're just going to squeeze this and just sort of flatten it out a little bit, and then you're going to apply it right to your skin. Once you get your poultice on, you're just gonna take your bandage and you're just going to start, start wrapping it around uh, your arm, your hand, you know, wherever you're putting the poultice and just do the best that you can. This is just to hold it in place. Now, once you get this wrapped in place with your bandage, you can do various things. You could have even cut this a little bit in advance and then just used that as a tie. That would be very old fashioned. Uh, I'm sure you've seen pictures whenever you've maybe looked at things you know, from the early American days here you know, in the colonial times during the Revolutionary War or, uh, you know, later in the 1800s and whatnot, you'd often see the bandages just tied. Uh, you can certainly do that, uh, but I don't want to create a lot of fraying in my bandages. 
And so what I'll do is just take a little tape like this and just a little bit of the, you know, medical tape. And so, you know, this one's just by, what does it say, gentle paper tape. And, you know, it's they sell it in the medical section, you know, of the drugstore where they have various bandages and things like that. And that'll just hold it in place. And then you can just leave it there for anywhere from 20 minutes to three hours. And how long you leave it in place will depend on what type of herbs you're using. And that's why I always recommend having a good a uh, source to learn about herbs and their various medicinal properties and how they can best help your skin in the case of an herbal poultice. Now, if you have an extremely wet herb, one that releases a lot of moisture, you can go ahead and also wrap this with a little bit of plastic wrap just to keep it from dripping or getting messy. But keep in mind, you only want to leave this on, and especially when you have it wrapped in plastic, for a limited time. Because at some point after the herbs have done their job, you want to allow your scrape or your scratch, whatever the case, your minor cut, you want to give it some time to breathe. And then after you let it breathe for some while, then you can repeat the treatment if you, still, if you feel you still need it. Now, I want to mention an alternative way to apply this particular herbal poultice, this particular medicinal herbal poultice, if you find the herbs just aren't sort of coming together tight enough and you really can't seem to get them to make a paste. Some folks will mix their herbs with some moistened clay. But clay may be something that you'll have to find at your drugstore or special order or whatever the case may be. However, there's a very simple solution. And chances are you've got this in your pantry. You can take some old-fashioned rolled oats, whirl them in a little spice grinder to turn them into a powder, mix them with a little bit of water to make a paste, and then mix your herbs with this oatmeal paste. And then apply it and then put your bandage on. And the nice thing about using old-fashioned rolled oats is that oats have their own healing properties for the skin, their own soothing properties. You may recall uh, hearing that often kids who had chicken pox would bathe in a bathtub, at least this is going back to when I was a kid, would bathe in a bathtub in which moms would sprinkle in some ground up oatmeal to help relieve them of the itching. This is something, I didn't have chicken pox, but my cousin did. And that was something that her mom did to help her relieve the feeling of itching. Oatmeal is very soothing to the skin. So that's another option that you can do when making your medicinal herbal poultice using fresh herbs if you don't find that they're moist enough to actually squeeze into and make your poultice. Now, can you go ahead and just add a little water? Certainly you can do that. But I just personally think, in my humble opinion, as I often say, that mixing the herbs with oatmeal kind of do double duty because they, or with oats, with ground oats, ground old-fashioned rolled oats, that they, it does double duty because it helps pull the herbs together and make a nice paste, but it also soothes the skin. Now that's how you make a poultice with fresh herbs. Now we're gonna move on and make a poultice with dry herbs. Now making a poultice from dried herbs is very easy. All you're gonna need is the dry herb, and I've got some dry thyme here, and you just want a little warm water. Now you don't want this boiling or very hot because you don't wanna do anything to damage the essential oils in your dried herb. So just mildly warm water, like say you were using some packaged yeast, maybe somewhere between 110 and 130 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, in addition to your dried herb and your warm water, you're going to want something that's going to make it easy for you to make a paste. You can certainly just mix it together and let it sit for a little while, and it may come together and form a paste, or what I like is using the mortar and pestle method. 
can you, as I just said a minute ago, soak your herb, your dried herb in your warm water and see if it comes together and make a paste. And if not, and you don't have a mortar and pestle, you can use your knife and try to mash it best you can, the same way we did with the fresh herb. But if you do have a little mortar and pestle, this works great. Now, I know many of you have asked me, where do I buy my dry herbs? And over the last few years, it's been kind of a challenge to find a good source for high quality dried herbs. But recently I was so blessed to meet a lady named C. Ann, who has a small family owned business called Farmhouse Teas. And I met her at the Modern Homesteading Conference that I attended recently up in Idaho. Farmhouse Teas sells a variety of tea blends, herbal tea blends, but they also sell individual dried herbs. And I love when I can support small family owned businesses and CN was so kind to offer a 10% discount to my viewers. And I'll be sure to put that information in the description underneath this video. CN of Farmhouse Teas also has a YouTube channel and a website, and I'll be sure to link to those as well. Now, how much dried herb you use to make your poultice really depends on how large a poultice you need to make. It's the same as when we were making the poultice from the fresh herbs. So since I just need a relatively small poultice, I'm just going to take about a tablespoon of my dried thyme here. And what I'm using is just common thyme. I know there are a lot of varieties of thyme. This is just common, plain, regular thyme. The same is, of, is true of my fresh uh, thyme plant and the same is true of my dried thyme. And so I'm gonna go ahead and put my tablespoon of dried thyme right into my mortar and pestle. And then I'm gonna start adding water a tablespoon at a time. And how much water you're gonna need to add will depend on what particular herb you're using and how dry it is. And I also want to share how old fashioned rolled oats can help in this situation as well. You can grind up some old fashioned rolled oats, turn them into a powder and add some right into your mortar and pestle where you can make your combined herb and oatmeal poultice. Now, can you turn this dried herb just with some warm water? into a poultice just like we did with the fresh herb? Yes. But just as I shared with the fresh herb, if you want to include uh, some rolled oats that you've ground up to help it even adhere better, you can definitely do that here. The process is just a little different in that rather than making a paste with the oatmeal ahead of time and then adding it or the oatmeal with the rolled oats that you've ground up into a powder and making that into a paste and then adding it in with your chopped dried, with your chopped fresh herbs. In the case of using dried herbs, you'll just wanna go ahead and ground up your rolled oats and your old fashioned rolled oats and then add the powder right in with your dried herbs and then start adding in your liquid and start making your paste. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna measure out a tablespoon of warm water and I'll just start grinding this up. We'll see how we do and whether or not we need a little more water or not. Now what you'll find is as you're crushing your herbs with the warm water, they'll start absorbing the water very quickly. And so it'll give you a good indication of whether or not you need more water or not. And generally for most dried herbs, usually a one-to-one -one ratio of dried herbs to warm water works quite well. If however, you did go ahead and add in some of your pulverized uh, old fashioned rolled oats, you'd want to add in the same amount as in the dried herbs. So you'd do one tablespoon dried herbs, one tablespoon of pulverized old fashioned rolled oats. So it's basically an oat powder and you'd add that in and then you'd go with two tablespoons of liquid. So keeping everything one to one, you have two ingredients in here, you're gonna need two tablespoons of water. Now you're going to find that the liquid, the water in this case, is going to absorb very quickly. 
and it's going to make a beautiful poultice. Look at this. See, it comes together beautifully. And how refreshed it looks. It's got a very uh, nice, you know, sort of that dark green uh, herbaceous color. <laughs> I think herbaceous you usually hear associated with uh, scent. But it's got a lovely herbal green color. And it's going to make the perfect poultice to use. And as you'll see, it's just a little slightly different color than using the fresh herb. Now you might be asking, why use one herb over the other? Are using fresh herbs to make a medicinal herbal poultice better than making a medicinal herbal poultice from dry herbs? Or does it not matter? Now the first thing I want to say is that you're going to use this poultice, this medicinal herbal poultice that we made from dry herbs exactly the same way we used the herbal poultice that we made from the fresh herbs. You're simply going to apply it, wrap your bandage, use a little plastic wrap if you feel it's needed, if it's particularly watery, generally with time you don't have that problem. And you know, somewhere between the 20 minutes to the three hours of leaving the poultice on. Again, a lot of that's going to depend on how long you do it on what particular type of herb you're using. In some cases, an herbal poultice made from fresh herbs is seen as having the most beneficial characteristics. However, if fresh herbs aren't always available, and many may not be able to be grown in your area, then dried herbs really do come to the rescue. And in my humble opinion, I think the benefits are relatively close. Now, if you'd like more information on how to make medicinal herbal remedies, be sure to click on this playlist over here where I include all of my master recipes as well as how to use those master recipes to make various medicinal herbal remedies. Plus, I talk about my healing pantry and my medicinal herbal cabinet and how you can create one too. And I'll see you over there in my Texas Hill Country Kitchen. Love and God bless.